first of all i want to thank for sesha organizers for organi organizing uh, the conference and in person it has been a really weird time after a pandemic uh, i am umang uh, i was basically a desktop engineer uh, recently i have turned into an embedded developer i have been contributing to open source since a long time now uh, i have been contribution across gnome os3 flatpak and other immutable oss uh, recently i am doing mostly uh, embedded upstream linux media and lib camera these days so we'll first take an overview around what complex cameras actually mean what are the challenges around in this field complications what we have been able to achieve and finally uh, any questions i would be happy to answer them uh, just a disclaimer uh, there are logos and trademarks in this talk and they belong to their respective owners so we have no intention or desire to take over their work so let us begin with complex cameras uh, this was around uh, 10 years ago the cameras were simple you really had a sensor and on the soc you had either a csi2 receiver or a scaler which will uh, scale your images and just give you an output to the capture node and the application could really uh, work with them uh, they were simple to configure and to develop uh, but around i will not name the model of this phone if anyone can guess it um, sorry uh this is where the complex get uh, ca cameras got complex uh now uh, from the simple uh, from here we are here the complex interfacing and uh, the basic pipeline got very complex uh in the red red uh, boxes you can see how the raw sensors are present on the soc front you might have ccp2 csi2 uh some something like a e like auto exposure white balance and a preview node for previewing the images and other nodes for for the still capture because preview nodes are generally low, low resolution and for the still capture you need the highest uh, resolution so they were separate nodes and for the api configuration you had multiple nodes uh, like uh, video 7 video 4 and their video 3 uh, respectively to configure and get the images out so from the left hand side where we had a simple camera media graph we went to something like this uh, omap3 uh, nuke 900 that's correct uh now in the recent development you might have also come across the raspberry pi autofocus camera modules as well which uh, if you can see in the middle the silver plate is basically a mot motor a very small motor called a uh, voice coil motor which will uh, move the lens to adjust the focus of the image and something like the autofocus block will be somewhere here in the green so it's yet another node coming up you can see the how the complexity of the camera and the pipelines is getting increased day by day so what are the challenges here uh from the application point of view uh things were really things can applications can manage to certain extent but the problem is that uh sorry the problem is that it doesn't scale you have an application and you have a underlying hardware the application is very much tied to the hardware it cannot be ported to any other uh, hardware for example a uh, uh, application written for for raspberry pi cannot be ported to rockchip or co cannot be ported to uh, applications uh, like more me complex camera hardware like intel ipo3 so application were very tied to the hardware application developers would uh, need to know the underlying hardware and how to configure it there are multiple nodes as you can see and each node has to be configured in a certain way at a certain time and a certain uh, certain position in the pipeline you cannot configure uh, for example uh, the C resizer node before the csi2 node receiver and all all of that so this makes uh, the application development quite hard so lip camera comes up as a solution or rather tries to be a solution but uh, let's see how how it is uh, filling the gap so uh, uh, before we uh, 
go ahead. Uh, I would like to know, I uh, would like to show you an overall architecture of the lift camera, which might seem a bit complex at first, but really uh, is a kernel where the drivers live and the underlying hardware, uh, the kernel exposes a V4L2 API and a meter controller API. On the top, you can see the adaptation, which is like basically the application facing APIs that the lift camera provides. The core is a lip camera helper, helper libraries, and the pipeline is what where things get interesting. Uh, on the top right, you can see the pipeline handler framework, which is very specific to what the underlying hardware is. So lip camera will have pipeline handlers for Raspberry Pi, different pipeline handler for Rockchip, different pipeline handler for IPO3 or IMX810 plus, uh, whatever the underlying hardware is, it will abstract all that inside a pipeline handler. Uh, on the, in the middle, you can see in the red box, you have the IPA module that is image processing algorithms. The image processing algorithms are the ISP blocks that are provided by the vendor. Uh, they are usually embedded on a system on chip, that is the SOC. Lip camera provides a way uh, in combination with the pipeline handler to configure the IPA or the uh, ISP that is based, uh, that is present in the system on chip. Uh, what happens basically is, if you can see in the previous diagrams, the red nodes are basically the raw sensors. They, these are the sensors which are, which if you cannot see and raw image directly, you, it needs to go through the processing blocks. So the processing blocks and the algorithms that run on, the, uh, that run on the platform are encapsulated in the IPA itself. The IPA can be proprietary. We have customers where they don't want to, uh, Open their IP and all the uh, the the basic the business the uh, business is driven by the uh, IPA model uh, being kept proprietary. Uh, so Lip Camera automatically has a sandboxed environment where it can uh, plumb the proprietary IPA into itself and can run with the open source uh, pipeline handler uh, to get the images out. And when you have a camera, when you have written an application, Lip Camera can do the device enumeration. It can discover what kind of platform it is. the application is running on. If it is a Raspberry Pi, it will invoke the Raspberry Pi handler, Raspberry Pi IPA algorithms, everything. If the same application is run on Rockchip, it can detect that it's a Rockchip platform and accordingly the pipeline handler algorithm and the entire pipeline is configured in that way. So to summarize uh, Lip Camera, how do we define it? Uh, open source camera stack and framework for Linux, Android, and Chrome OS. Uh, what are the complications? So basically, V4L2 is everywhere, and everybody seems to love it. It exists, first of all, uh, in the upstream Linux kernel. There is no other, uh, for the media capture, V4L2 is the, uh, by default, uh, API that kernel provides. If in future, kernel comes up with a different uh, Video Capture API, Lip Camera would be happy to support it, and we are working in that direction as well. Uh, the same APIs, V4L2 is used for simple uh, cameras, digital uh, so TV setup boxes, etc. So when you have something like, there are areas of conflict such as color spaces, where some color spaces doesn't make sense for a, uh, for a camera, but does make sense for a TV or setup box streams. Uh, so there are conflicts like that, uh, but the V4L, V4L2 uh, API is what we have and we have to live with it for now, uh, but it is widely tested. Uh, V4L2 is used already. It has great interoperability, and these are the applications and the media frameworks that you can see on the screen. But not everybody loves V4L2 because the problem is everything is configured through a node and when the com camera pipeline is very complex, you have to, the application has to take care of various, various types of node and has to deal with reconfiguration and uh, configured in a certain way, which makes them uh, quite uh, opaque for uh, portability reasons. Uh, sub devices, uh, as we, as I said, like there are, there is ISP on the system on chip, there are uh, multiple devices that needs to be configured. 
Uh, so the application developer might have questions like which which sub device I should configure first, or is this the right way to do it, or what is the format that needs to be uh, that needs to be configured for the entire like uh, media bus. Multiple nodes for a single camera device. The application developer only needs to care about that. This is a camera. This is how I configure it. So in, in when in the absence of lip camera, he has he or she has to deal with multiple video nodes. For example, metadata video nodes, CSI2 receiver. In the ISP, it, it itself has multiple nodes, M2M dwarper. Uh, V4L2 alone isn't enough because three uh, for when the ISP comes in the picture, the sensors are really raw sensors. They are not RGB or YUV sensors, and YUV sensors are becoming obsolete. Laptops are now using uh, using complex cameras. One example is IP, Intel's uh, IPU3 and uh, IPU6. These are really complex cameras, and we need support for uh, for a, like the lip camera has to pitch in to have have a consistent API interface to access those cameras on Linux. Uh, embedded devices are already using complex cameras. The example previously I gave you around. Raspberry Pi's autofocus module, it's a complex camera. But OEM needs custom solution to manage these cameras, and they, uh, I'm not sure, uh, you, Ubuntu had shipped a very proprietary camera stack for I, Intel IPU3, uh, where we discussed with them, like, the camera can be a solution. Uh, no portable uh, mo cam mobile camera application, as I said, the application is very much tied to the underlying hardware when the, when a complex camera is involved so portability is just out of the question but there is a new api and lip camera uh, aims to solve it the problem is uh, we lip camera needs to have very good kernel support for like the sensor driver should be upstream the isp driver should be upstream and then only the lip camera comes in and solves the problem we live uh, in an age where upstreaming itself is a difficult task. There are many BSPs and BSP kernels and drivers are floating around. Uh, C application don't want to use C++. Lip camera is written in C++. Uh, but we are working on language widenings as well. Is it finished? Not yet. But we do have releases. We are not guaranteeing ABI stability yet. Uh, so after all this to, uh, after the challenges and the complications that uh, lip camera tries to address uh, these are some features and developments uh, lip camera has a gstreamer element that means you can use the gstreamer element to uh, encode stream and mix all the G other gstreamer elements up and try to get a pipeline working as you wish uh, so yeah, the example is for the simple camera viewer, uh, JPEG network streamer, and for the receiver as well. We have Python support. So uh, this was first language binding that we uh, landed officially in the lip camera repo. Based on that, uh, Pi Camera 2, which is which is not a part of lip camera, it's a Raspberry Pi's work uh, to uh, uh, it's a Lip camera based replacement for Pi camera, which was a Python interface for uh, Raspberry Pi legacy camera stack. And many La Raspberry Pi users and hobbyists uh, are very familiar with the Pi camera. Uh, we do have an Android help implementation. The picture you see is running uh, the Chrome OS camera app, and the, the stream is going through Lip camera uh, HAL layer. Uh, we do have V4M L2 compatibility layer, similar thing, LD preload. Uh, we will uh, hijack the calls from, uh, if you have a lib V4L2, uh, if you have an application based on lib V4L2, uh, you can just uh, swap and swap out uh, lib camera. As well as test applications. Uh, we do develop like uh, for our own use and to test uh, the entire library, we do have QCAM and CAM. These are very helpful and uh, we encourage user to just try getting started with these uh, to get an uh, introduction to lip camera. We do have a simple hello world for the API, which is like a very simple uh, camera manager starts. I want to get these cameras, run, queue up request, and stop. And you can see what's capturing and how it is done. 
Uh, we do have PipeWire. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody is uh, aware of PipeWire. It's a upcoming Linux multimedia stack. Uh, last year on a PipeWire Hackfest, we tried running Chromium, which would go through the XTG uh, camera portal, and it was routed to PipeWire, then to LibCamera, then to, to up, up, uh, back to the kernel. So we already are working and it's already merged. I think the PyPy integration is already there, which uh, has multiple, like PyPy has a much, much broader uh, uh, exposure to stacks like uh, video conferencing solutions, uh, browsers. Uh, this is the PyPy stack where the app, the browser, the streamer, VLC are talking to the PyPy, the PyPy for imaging can offload its stars to lip camera and lip camera will deal with the camera's side of things. And for the audio, you have Bluetooth, ALSA, and Pulse Audio integration, I think. Uh, so the pipe wire really fits in the between for all your um, video and audio uh, handling. So uh, I have linked a blog for the pipe, uh, to getting an introduction to the pipe wire. Uh, snapshot is a upcoming convergent camera app where we, the goal of the app is uh, to have a unified camera app that can run on both on Linux based mobiles and uh, distributions. It is uh, incubated in Gnome. So very happy to see that. Uh, we do have Flypack support across, Flypack support means uh, like you have permission base, like if, you, if an application tries to Hello. Uh, so the XTG portal, WebRTC now supports XTG portal and lip camera will uh, have or uh, has XTG portal support. That means WebRTC will can give you frames that are coming through XTG portal, then lip camera and everything can work. In the new future, when the XT uh, when the WebRTC and the XTG portal have been merged, you can really access cameras from your browser. These are two um, uh, Bugzilla or, and the Garrett link for the Firefox and Chromium. Uh, once this is done, you can uh, the browser will be working with lip camera for the video capture support. Another notable development is Pinhole. It uh, the developed by Rafael 2K. Uh, oh, sorry, Alan Speak. Uh, the it's a fork of SailOS Harbor Camera, which is a, a Qt based uh, applic camera application developed for original Pine Phone, and it the application is really really nice because it has manual controls like you can uh, change and tinker with exposure time brightness in the UI itself. Uh, this is a demo image uh, testing on the Pine Phone using lip camera. Uh, WayDrive. WayDrive is a container-based approach to uh, like having a uh, Android system on your, on your regular uh, GNU Linux system, and uh, we tried and had integrated lip camera uh, in in WayDrive. So you have uh, like a miniature image running on your GNU Linux system, where it accesses the camera through uh, lip camera, and la uh, one. I think this is the last one. Uh, Pine Phone Pro, we uh, test ground for mobile Linux capture for everything. Uh, it's a rock chip RK3399. It's a complex camera with a raw sensor and ISP, and it's already support supported by lip camera. I do have a demo for this. Uh, let's see. Uh, so this is a demo for Pine Phone Pro, uh, capturing images with lip camera. You can see the initial support is there, but like the algorithms, IP algorithms are still uh, needs to uh, get better.
Yep, I think that's enough. Uh, and last but not the least, this is a very recent development that I put in in the last minute. Plug and play Raspberry Pi USB camera. So here is a Raspberry Pi. I think the autofocus camera that I first showed you, it is plugged into a Raspberry Pi Nano. And through UVC gadget uh, that our uh, team have developed, uh, it can now get plugged into your regular laptops and can be used as a webcam. So you can see the entire, uh, the convex camera uh, supported by Raspberry Pi. It's using the Raspberry Pi, uh, Pi pipeline handler and IP algorithms and then can, then can be used just a regular USB camera into your laptops. And so that's pretty much it. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, I would be happy to answer them. So, not yet, but we are working with devices which have multiple cameras. Um, for example, I think uh, the Chromebooks have multiple cameras, back camera and the front camera. The lip camera can handle multiple cameras, but it depends on how the ISP is configured. Some ISPs only, only supports like streaming one camera at a time. We do have platforms where, uh, where multiple streaming and uh, simultaneous use of cameras is, uh, is okay. Uh, we are working on something on logical, we are working on something that is called logical camera grouping. So that is like mutual exclusion of cameras and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's still work in progress, but it's much more hardware dependent what the hardware capabilities are. Uh, stereo vision? Uh, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't seen the two cameras. Okay. Uh, I think that's a layer above lip camera that you have to build. You have to get the frames and you know, stitch, 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 yeah. Yep. Which support? Pixel binning. You, you do have pixel binning in the sensor itself when you get the raw image. Yep. So that, that's a detail you put in, in the pipeline handler itself or like the binning, uh, how do you do the binning? Image plus? Uh, with the distance, you mean the focus? I'm not sure I'm not getting it. The distance. Uh, the depth component, uh, yeah. It, it's a control, uh, control, like uh, many cameras have different types of controls. What the camera sensor can support, what the ISP can support. So I, Think the depth would be the one of the controls if the platform in the sensor can support it it can be like configured by the application itself so you you can put in uh, if the platform itself doesn't support the camera will, won't expose that it, it's supporting a depth since They do in the Chrome OS, they have their own um, camera stack, which is, uh, I think it's called Cross Camera HAL, uh, Chrome OS Camera HAL. So, so they are, uh, we, we do have Chrome OS working with lip camera already. So uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you once again.